So, we will we will go towards SIFT, but then before that okay, there is something that I would like to talk about what is called blob detection as I, as I mentioned in the last class. Right, it is not just a, right, you, 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 you kind of look for corners, it images are various things and uh, you want to look for some things that could be generally of interest and uh, one such thing is a blob. I mean blob is like you know, any area of where let us say there is some activity and there is some interesting stuff kind of going on right. So, just to kind of give you an idea right as to and why for example, why we need uh, this you know why need to why we need to be able to handle scale and all that right will will be will be apparent now. Oh before that right let me just show you a few examples of that corner detection I think last time I forgot to forgot to do that let us just go back to last time was what? 21 right. So, there I think there is something that I forgot to show at the end. So, we went up to this and uh, yeah. So, this is something that just, uh, just so that it just uh, sh stays in your stays in your mind. So, so you have kind of two images right and uh, you want to be able to match key points on them in this case corners and uh, what you can do is you know you can <coughs> you can compute a corner response and uh, of course, it, this by itself is not useful. Then you can do fine points with a corner response greater than a threshold which is what we said last time right. So, that the the, the weak guys sort of drop off then we have to do something like you know a non maxima suppression which is like you know pick only the local points of local maxima. And I hope you are able to see all these all these small small points right which I have emerged okay those are all those are all the corners that it has picked and then if you actually plot them on the image right. So, kind of they kind of look like that which is also which is what I meant I mean a corner the way we define right is like what we think right it should be like, but eventually uh, anything right that uh, that would uh, that would actually give out a corner response that is sufficiently strong right it will pick all of that. So, it is for us to you know it is not humanely possible for us to sort of examine it you know what kind of a corner it is and so on, but then wherever the corner response has been has been uh, has been significant right it has picked up all such points and uh, and of course, you know one of the things that I also mentioned was the fact that uh, this rotation invariance we already saw right when you can have a rotated picture and uh, right and then the features are actually covariant, but uh, uh, and of course, you know you should be able to also match them. A uh, scaling right as I mentioned uh, not invariant to scaling and, and anything above that and, and you can and you can imagine why so because I mean if I keep zooming in right I mean this is maybe at some scale of zoom and then if you zoom further right then maybe then maybe right you know it will become even more smooth and then and then maybe right the kind of a corner response that you would get I mean you may still think that oh there is something like a bend there would that not be a corner or something, but then the, the strength there would automatically go down then it would not qualify for a corner with sufficient strength right. And uh, so, so which is why which is why you know which is why we say that uh, it is not actually covariant because uh, you know scale depends upon at what scale you are examining it and there could come a point where something that was originally declared as a corner at some scale no longer looks like a corner and therefore, we cannot say that we can take any scale and then right and then be able to say that it is a corner okay. So, I think yeah, this was just uh, just something that I wanted to show before we actually proceed to blobs. Uh, so, let us come to the blob thing. So, corners of course, you have already seen. So, that is uh, so let us go and see what is the. So, blobs right are, are okay. So, here here are what we would consider as blobs. So, right things which have which have a lot of activity under them and well, of course, you know this is for some threshold and so on. So, I mean wherever it you know it picks up. So, so you can think of uh, so you can think of right some kind of a template right some kind of a structure that you have which you should be able to apply, but then one of the things right that you actually notice is that you know there are these blobs at various different scales here right. It is not like there is just uh, you know one scale of uh, one scale of activity the activity is going on in different different scales and you need something like a probe you know which will kind of probe them at the different scales and try to tell at what scale right something something is actually still 
consumption can still be considered as a blob of activity and maybe right some other scale it you know it, you know, it does not look like it is so strong, but then at some scale it, it appears to be a blob of activity. For example, right, I mean if I take if I take this guy right here ok. Now, if you see that circle right that has a certain scale right. Now, if I had taken taken a circle of this kind right which is much smaller ok and uh, it is quite possible that you know that at that scale right it did not flag it to be a blob right. I mean in the sense that maybe it had some strength but then it still did not consider it to be high enough and then right as it worked towards a different scale at some scale right it sort of flagged it and it said well at the scale right it looks like a good fit and then right that is like a blob. And then again right so again maybe if I cross that scale suppose I take something like this and then and then uh, right if I were to put, if I were to put that there right for some reason it does not think that right that is that is a blob right. So, so at some scale it kind of uh, so it is like a probe you know. So, where where the probe should so sort of an automatically tell that uh, that you know when it actually probes it then for a smaller one it should probe at a, a probe with a, with a kind of a smaller. So, it is like you know what what to say right if you have if you have a if you have a big probe right and suppose uh, suppose you want to get to say resolve two points you cannot right I mean as the area of the probe increases your ability to be able to say that there are actually right two uh, two points that are separated from each other will go down right somewhat similar to that. So, when you when you want a probe. Uh, then that probe size size should automatically adjust. So, that when you actually put it then for a smaller one the probe should automatically become small and then say that yes right this is a blob. If it is a big one then the probe should automatically become big and then sort of say that well at that scale right this looks like a blob and so on right. Uh, yeah I mean right that is a that is a kind of you know, uh, you know analogy you can have because I was thinking whether I can give you something from from you know Fourier this one, uh, but I do not think it is directly the same. Ok, we will anyway right we will see that. So, blobs right. So, ok uh, hey wait a minute right? this is supposed to have some animation no I do not see that ok anyway right. So, what happens is actually there is an animation here ok or, or maybe uh, this plot does not have maybe ok. So, it is like this right. So, at this scale right. So, if you see the x axis right that is the scale and you have a scene right that is actually taken one is kind of zoomed in another is zoomed out right. This is like from far and then that is like a little closer, but in both cases we know that right it is it is it is some object of interest sitting there and you see that right at some scale it seems to flag this. So, so because of the fact that this object looks bigger therefore, right it requires a larger probe and therefore, right at some higher scale it actually flags it. It does not mean that at other scales there is no flagging it is just that right at some point it, it kind of hits a peak and that is where you get the maximum strength and similarly right here. Uh, for example, because of the fact that this actually zoomed out. So, it is kind of smaller right and therefore, you uh, know and uh, uh, what do you call right and uh, and therefore, it follows that the scale that you require is going to be probably much smaller and uh, and therefore, it at a smaller scale it flags it whereas, whereas it is not uh, for, for example, if that scale of 10 right wherever it is I mean maybe somewhere here and you see that it is still giving out a response, but that is not the that is not the scale right at which at which the object object uh, is able to give out the maximum strength right with respect to the probe. So, the whole idea behind uh, uh, behind right you uh, know behind uh, doing shift right which is what we eventually want to do is to be able to handle. So, the, the, the transform itself is called scale invariant uh, feature transform and of course, and it should also have you know other characteristics right. I mean the way it has been built is it is not something built just for scale uh, the, even though you know by the name of it it looks like it is something that can only deal with scale. But, uh, it can do several things ok and it also it also depends upon how it has evolved and then how the how they come up with actually a descriptor that can handle various variations and so on. But this but the blob detection is like the first step right to even understand why SIFT works the way it does I mean for example, SIFT uses you know a difference of Gaussian and all that is a paper by a, by a person called Loewe it was a 2004 paper and uh, Apparently, there is some there is some there is some interesting anecdote to that maybe some other day, but uh, then uh, the, he is the one who actually based upon this blob and all right. So, he kind of uh, advanced it right and uh, that is how shift came about. And, uh, so, for example, right. So, so, the basic idea ok now yeah I think all right yeah, I think you know yeah, before we see these pictures I think let us let us kind of do some do some analysis just to understand it right, what we need ok. So, blob this one detection uh, yeah. So, I so do yeah. So, I think did I also show the flower example I did right ok. 
Now, in order to understand, right, let's kind of let's kind of look at a one D illustration because a one D illustration is much more easy to easy to understand and it's easy to see what an edge is and so on. Right? So, so I'm going to take one D as an as an example, but all that I say can easily be you know can easily be extended and analyzed in actually two D. Okay. Now, in all of this, right, if you see, they will use what is called uh, what is called a normalized Laplacian of the Gaussian. Okay, you have seen log, right? There's something called a normalized Laplacian of the of the Gaussian. Okay. Now, this now this normalization, right? There is a certain factor by which you multiply in order to be able to normalize, and one has to understand as to why they do it. Okay, and why that normalization factor comes in, and so on. So maybe what I'll do is, you know, I'll again go back, uh, go back to the, to this, uh, to this example. Let me see where is that. Ah, huh, let me go to this example. Okay. Now, if you see, right, uh, here is an edge. Okay, has some noise and so on. Not really an ideal edge. Right, has a little bit of slope and then goes. Right, not doesn't have infinite slope. As a finite slope and then hits a higher value. Now we know that, right? We can actually probe it using this one, a Laplacian of a log, right? So we know that if we can identify the zero crossing, then we know where the edge lies. And uh, therefore, right? If we had, if, you know, if you were to take a take a, what, what is this? G is actually a Gaussian. Okay. So this is like a second derivative of the Gaussian, which is what we mean by mean by a Laplacian. Now in one D, right? This is how it looks like. So this is what we call. Eh? Right, Mexican hat. Okay, so so in two D, right, you can imagine, right, it looks like a looks like a Mexican hat, right. So in one D, that's how it will look. Now, uh, now if you were to see convolve it, right, with this signal f with the step, then we uh, then uh, then we know that, right, this is how this is the kind of uh, kind of right. I mean, a response you will see. I mean, right, this we know. This we have also plotted sometimes, right, and we know that. The, the 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 zero crossing is where the kind of right edges. Uh, but now, right, if you go to the go to the situation, right, where I have where I have a blob. See a blob, right, in one D, right. If you were to take this one, a cross section, it'll be like it'll be like you know some intensity, and then it suddenly goes down to zero, then again comes back up, right. So, so so if you were to kind of think of a blob, right, then then really it's kind of you know a double edged, oops, double edged uh, this one, right. It's like it's like a step. Right? I mean, you could have you could have the other way around also. And so here it's like going from zero to one. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, if you try to probe this, okay. Now, uh, now, right? What what we what we plan to do is we will take uh, we'll take a take a log, right? And we will and we will try to see, right? I mean, how it actually uh, responds to these to these edges. Now. At this point, right? I mean, you know, you see that you see that, right? A response, right, which you will get for that edge is this, and and a response, right, which you will get for this edge, right, is going to be this. And of course, you see that the signs are signs are opposite because of the fact that in one case it's a rising edge, another case it's a falling edge. And this the kind of zero crossing, right, is somewhere here. Okay, that is where the the edge is kind of say located. Now this by itself, uh, right? It seems to say something, but then, right? You know, I am still not able to able to tell much. Now, if this, if this pulse or this width of this uh, of the blob, right? If it shrinks now, if I make it smaller, what will happen? Then these guys, right? Will come, will come kind of, right? Will come kind of say closer now. Then again, right? I kind of uh, reduce the width further. Then they come even closer. And then, right? At this point, okay? When I kind of, when I kind of bring them even more close. Right, I see. I see something like like an I say extremum now. Right, it could it could be a minimum, it could be a maximum, but there is an extremum there. Okay, let me see if there is another slide. Huh. Okay, now this is this is how you, this is this is what is an ideal situation. Okay, which wherein let's say right at some scale things have matched, and at some scale right think about think about the probe right matching matching with the see, width of this blob. And then flagging it, right? So that at other places there was some strength, but then, but then there, are, but then for this probe, the actual signal that it can actually pick is this blob. You can also interchange the roles, right? You can actually, you can actually think of, uh, think of, right? I mean, uh, you can actually think of, uh, think of having, having the blob to be of a fixed size, and then, and then you can actually probe it, probe it with the log wherein the, the sigma can be then varied. Right, and you can then ask at what sigma it does. It, does it match the 
blob right so this can be interchanged now actually right, you know uh, in reality what happens is this right you have a blob right and you, and you are and you are trying to uh, trying to write you know this and examine it now when you actually now in this case right in this case we have actually interchanged the role right we have kept the blob size to be fixed and we are trying to change the state the sigma of the log right but I mean, that's why log is actually good i mean it gives you a control about what you want to do right so there is a sigma that allows you to control now when you know, when you when you actually increase the sigma right what you find is that is that right is that of course you know is is that is that right you go from here then you go from here to here then you go from here to here and you actually see see something like this one a minimum there and then and then it goes from there and then again right it seems to rise after that okay it's not very clear from this plot but then it's not actually then it looks like something is going on there at some it looks like right at this point it probably clicked the best right in terms of achieving something but then if you look at the strength or uh, the magnitude of or the or the strength of the response that seems to have gotten scaled down right as i kept right increasing my sigma so in a, in a way so that is called unnormalized laplacian right that means i've not applied any kind of normalization i've just applied a gauss uh, the log and then just kept on i kept on increasing my sigma and what has happened is it has of course you know brought these things close together they start interacting at some point and then at some point right, it looks like something nice happened here uh, but then right i cannot say that you know i've already achieved an extremum because the 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 way the, the range from here to here is is not the same right there's there's been you know a difference and after this something else seems to be happening maybe if i increase it further you know maybe right this will become even more flat and so on now ideally right what you would uh, okay so so ideally right what you would like to have is some kind of an you see some sort of an you know what do you call uh, you need an you see invariance so that the strength is not actually affected by my sigma i mean that is when right we will be able to ideally pick up pick up as to when when the probe actually matches the blob right in terms of the scale okay this is what uh, this is what right we would like to see next as to how that is what is actually a, actually a normalized laplace another goes in okay that is the role of the that is a, that is the reason why we go for a normalized log because an unnormalized log is not really the, the best thing to use Thank you.